All right, it's Friday. It has been super, super fun doing these Q and A's with different people on my team. So today we're gonna wrap up with um, a little chat with Jennifer Stachowski. She's a leader in my downline from the Toronto area and her business is just blowing up, exploding right now. And I'm excited for you guys to hear from her. So I'm gonna give you guys a minute to get on here. Oh, I see her there, so let's connect. Hi, how are you? I'm great, how are you? Good, thank you. Good, my can goodness. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you great, yeah, okay, you can hear me? Yes. Yeah, that is a beautiful color on you. Thank you. Wow, I've been really drawn to like that shade of purple lately and it's so pretty. Thanks. Yeah, you look gorgeous. All right, well thank you for uh, spending some time with me. I know You're welcome. Just Excited. Just a little uh, wrench thrown in your day but I appreciate you taking the time to to chat and connect and share more about your story thank you so let's jump right in I'm starting everybody off with the same question all week I want to know where you grew up what childhood was like so I grew up in Richmond Hill Ontario Canada and I grew up in a Christian home um, two-parent family um, my parents were very hands-on, so my dad would play sports with me, show me how to play sports. Um, my mom was very involved with um, helping me in terms of, you know, schoolwork, and she loved to travel. So, you know, every year we'd go on a mom and daughter trip. Um, my grandmother lived with us until she passed when I was 15, and I had a very strong bond with my grandmother. And uh, what else can I tell you? I was very musically inclined and played piano for like years from like yay high. Um, and I played up to conservatory level, but I didn't do all of the necessary testing and all that for it. It was more for fun. Yeah. Um, in school, I was very involved with music, singing, playing different instruments. Um, I'm an only child. Okay. And I don't know that I ever asked my parents for a sibling because we had such a large extended family and cousins and friends and stuff were always over at the house. Yeah. And cousins would stay for weeks at a time in the summer and there was always other kids around. Um, and my family is very involved even today with helping others. Um, my dad has a sister who years ago ran an orphanage in Africa and I just remembered that's when it started where I wanted to make a difference in the lives of others who needed it. We'd always collect items from the church or within our own family and extended family and send those things off and I just feel like I got a lot of lifelong values mm -hmm. instilled at a young age from my family. Oh that's so fascinating. Yeah. Do you still do anything musical? Do you still like to sing? You know what? Play? Sadly, no. No. Um, wow. I would love to bring another piano into the home at some point in time. I think I feel like I need to learn from scratch. I know some people say, oh, well, once you stop and you start again, it just yeah. comes back and you remember it. I don't know. I'll, I'll let you know if that happens or not. <laughs> I would like to bring a piano into the home again, and I would love to teach my daughter too at some point. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. so interesting. It's, it's neat to me when somebody has had something be such a big part of their life. And then some, yeah. you know, as adults, we drop these, yeah. these gifts or these talents that we have and life, life starts to take us in another path. Yeah. Yeah. So um, how about after high school? What did you do for some of your first jobs and what do you do now? So after high school, I went to York University. And I graduated with a BA in psychology, a minor in marketing. And I had been working uh, while I went to university. I was working literally at just shy of full-time hours. So here I'm working all these hours and doing all this schooling. And then when I graduated from York, I wondered, like, what do I do now? Like, I envisioned myself doing something creative, maybe in marketing, and I thought, 
you know, maybe I'll go to college and I'll take a hands-on course for advertising. But then I'm sure like many kids at the time is thinking, oh my gosh, go to school again full time and give up some of this money working. Mm -hmm. And so then I decided, forget it. You know, they offered me uh, a full-time position, a good other position at the company I was at. I was working for a finance company at the time and um, I accepted it. And I continued working there for a number of years and moved up the ranks and I loved it. So that's what I did after high school. Okay. And where does that tie you to what you do now? Any, any, um, a little bit with regard to leadership and so forth, but now the full-time job I'm in now is very different. I don't work in the financial sector. Yeah. Um, I create, so I, I now am able to use the creativity and so forth and planning, you know, recognition programs for staff and planning events. So, yeah. you know, it's up my alley and I enjoy what I do today as well. Oh, that's super fun. Um, so, at some point, you came across doTERRA. It was interesting yes. to you. What was going on in your life at the time, and what made it kind of apparent to you that you needed these oils? So it was, I want to say, maybe two and a half years ago. Yeah. And I, much like probably many other people, I heard the term essential oils, yeah. but honestly, I didn't know anything about them. I didn't know what they were. Yeah. And my best friend at the time had brought doTERRA into her home. Okay. And we talk every single day and every day telling me these wins that the family was experiencing. And then um, she told me about a neighbor across the street who didn't have oils in their home. Yeah. And the kids had, I don't know if they'd gone out for dinner, but they all had tummy aches. And she oh. took over peppermint oil. And within minutes, she's like, oh my goodness, they reported back. Like, they don't have these tummy aches anymore. And yeah. we also have a mutual friend who at the time was using oils and had a neighbor with a, a child that had respiratory issues and had to have assistance um, mm -hmm. due to that. And so when I heard the story about using one of the respiratory oils that doTERRA has and this child doesn't need that assistance anymore, yeah. that's when I thought, you know, there's something more to this. And mm -hmm. I'm somebody, I'm a very optimistic person, but I'm also, um, I need to research things. Like, I can't just take them. Somebody can't just say, oh, Jennifer, this is the way it is. I had to research it. And so at the time, um, I had been doing respite care. So I'm an adoptive mom. And at the time, I had been fostering. And I was fostering my now daughter, but I had her part-time. And I had been told, hey, um, you have this opportunity to adopt her. And she was going to be arriving in a couple months full-time. And I... I just thought to myself, which I'm sure a lot of moms do, like, um, you want to focus on you as a mom and your health and, you know, you're hearing all these things in the news about these toxins and products and I thought, I don't want to bring that in my home. Like, we're starting something fresh and mm -hmm. I, um, I want to do good things for her. And so that's when I thought, you know, we're going to research which oils are right. I did my research. I was reading medical journals. I was connecting with people around the world. I was having phone calls with them. And they wow. all said similar things. And I realized um, these are people who don't know one another. You know, um, this is not fluke. And I brought them into my home at that point, And we had a lot of wins with them. Oh, that's amazing. I yeah. love the investigator in you. <laughs> See if all these stories just, match up. It's in me. I can't just take what somebody says. Yeah, yeah. Now, you have quickly pivoted into growing a business that's exploding right now. You are pouring your time and energy into helping leaders get started in new markets. So what was it about the biz that caught your eye? Was it sort of happening on its own by accident, or were you very You know what? Once I experienced wins, so I brought them into, the, into my home and I started using them on myself. So I had huge wins. So everything from being at home for the summer with my daughter when I first saw her, I had a skin pigment issue all across my forehead. And okay. it had been for years. And it was something that was, 
you know, it, it made me self-conscious. And I knew that frankincense oil was known to be fantastic for skin. So that summer, I thought, morning and night, I'm going to use it. And mm -hmm. lo and behold, before the summer was done, that had disappeared and never returned, you know. And then I started taking the lifelong vitality supplements. And um, my hair, I remember going out for dinner one night and my friends were like, what's different about your hair? And, and you just look different. And I was thinking, um, like, I don't know what you're talking about. And the only thing I could think of was these lifelong vitality supplements. They're like, Jennifer, your hair's gotten so long and it looks shiny and your skin is glowing. And I'm like, I'm thinking, thank you for the lifelong <laughs> vitality supplements. And yeah. my daughter, like, when I was fostering her part-time, she was always sick. So we had wins where I boosted her immunity. And now, you know, she was rarely sick. Um, she had, you know, dry skin, lavender and tea tree. So when I had these wins, I was like, I know too many friends and family that can benefit from this. And, you know... I, I want to be able to help people bring this stuff into homes. If somebody ever asked me a couple of years ago if I could see myself doing something like this, I'd be like, heck no. Yeah. But then the more I thought about it and the idea of loving to help people, mm -hmm. it was like the perfect pairing. And then with doTERRA and the co-impact sourcing piece, you know, here I was as a youth helping children that lived in an orphanage. And now mm -hmm. through doTERRA, I can help contribute and give back in other ways for co-impact sourcing. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. Sometimes people either like know they want to help and they don't know how to get involved and what yeah. to trust and that kind of bridges that gap for people and for others it awakens this piece that was like always a part of their life like you're yeah. mentioning and realizing how full circle it comes it's like yeah. we get these super cool bottles in our home and it blows our minds and yet these beautiful families that have like harvested and grown these plants for centuries are are part of it for us yeah. right and we get to yeah. bless them by continuing to buy their <laughs> their oil and it's just it's really cool it really is thanks for sharing that so maybe let's um jump on a topic we haven't discussed this week at all and talking about sharing these oils with people across the globe and what that has looked like for you as somebody who's sharing them with people who have family and friends elsewhere. Yeah, so uh, more recently, actually, we've expanded our team, my team, outside North America. Um, we are now in the Philippines. Um, we okay. have some individuals in Hong Kong as well. And, you know, I just want to keep growing that. When I, when I look at this and I look at my team, I want to... Um, I want us to feel like we're doing it together mm -hmm. and I, you know, however we're going to accomplish it, we've done great so far. I know together we're going to continue to make it happen. Um, I want to go far with this. I want to help as many families as we possibly can and continue to do that down the road. I don't even want to put a number on it, but I see yeah. us doing big, big things. Oh, that's really, really cool. Maybe you could share a couple of tips um, about what it's like working in other markets, you know, where there are different, like maybe language barriers or people are used to spending money in different ways on their health care. And how, how has that been for you? kind of working with somebody on your team that's got friends and family because I think when I think about the conversations we've had this week it's been very much about like let's help our friends and family and our neighbors yeah. but we haven't talked about the global growth opportunity when our oils are accessible on, on nearly every corner of every continent. It makes it interesting so I'm lucky in terms of Philippines that I have a few people um, on my team that are originally from the Philippines that are now in Canada. So they've been able to help tremendously in terms of the language and so forth. Um, even together uh, this week, we've been putting together, you know, these trifold brochures and trying to customize them for the Philippine market and, you know, just trying new things. And, you know, we're working on putting class 
classes together where we can get groups of people in the Philippines to be able to get in a room together and mm -hmm. attend a class, you know, maybe it's a make and take class or so forth, and even do uh, a Zoom that's live with us where we're able to teach an intro to oil. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's exciting. I'm sure it's going to be ever evolving. I uh, try to connect as much as possible with other people within doTERRA that have expanded into these different markets to get their advice on, you know, what, you know, should we do next? What recommendations would have worked for you? Yeah. Um, so that's been helpful. That's amazing. And that has come up in almost every conversation as well as the generosity among like cross line, like people that are Absolutely. on the same. I, I just... can't speak enough for both of them. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad you're glad you're doing that. And it's cool. A lot of people don't realize that it's not, it's like all of these different markets and areas in the world have their own doTERRA offices opening and they can get their products shipped right. Like I think the Philippines opened what about a, maybe a year ago? Now? Yes. It's about five now. Yeah. So it's really yeah. cool to think about an, uh, a culture and community being impacted in a these areas so that's amazing i can't wait to see what happens for you guys there me too me too <laughs> um so what would you say has been we've kind of touched on a few things you've enjoyed but the culture and community of tara what has been something you know especially you living in the gta it's an area that sometimes it's i feel like it's harder i hear for people to get together because everyone maybe comes into a workplace and scatters back out so even just from an online sense what has stood out to you about our culture and community you mean in terms of doTERRA people or trying to build a uh, business? Yeah, within doTERRA. Within doTERRA. So I find that I can reach out to absolutely anybody. And mm -hmm. I imagine a lot of doTERRA people feel the same way. Anybody I've ever encountered, whether it was yourself when, you know, we first met, um, even when I had a, my very first class and I got people to the class and I had somebody from doTERRA that was used to teaching a class and sharing about oils come and I met her and I was like it was like a breath of fresh air like I find everybody is just so passionate about what they do they're willing to brainstorm with me if I have questions they'll help me they have that same passion and drive for helping others and it just you feel like you're really part of a community and there's so much free training that if somebody came into this and knew absolutely nothing, they'd have everything at their fingertips, in my opinion, that could help them be successful. Um, and I think we're blessed to have a community that is just so, everybody's so like-minded. Mm -hmm. It's just absolutely incredible. And I love how, like you mentioned earlier, like the cross lines of businesses and so forth. I just feel like you can be somebody else's cheering section and they can be yours mm -hmm. and it's genuine. Yeah. And, and I think that's hard to come by in a lot of businesses um, these days. I agree. You don't very often see people wanting to share their secrets and what's yeah, worth. Yeah, like, but you no, know. it's it's like it's one big family that's willing to share, and yeah. and that has been absolutely amazing, and just makes the experience so much better. Yeah, absolutely. Now let's talk about challenges. What has been challenging challenges. about this? You know, building this in whatever way that's shown up for you and what are some of the things you're doing to to keep jumping the next <laughs> yeah. so challenges so the first thing that comes to mind are placements because when you start a business you want to think strategically you want it to be successful and within doTERRA we have what are called placements which i'm not going to go all into but yeah. um that took a little getting used to you know yeah. you want your business to be successful yeah. um I eventually got the hang of it. We're obviously doing very well. Um, I guess my word of advice to somebody would be, you know, early on, ask questions from those that will be able to help share and guide you and direct you in terms of placements. Yeah. Um, another challenge, and maybe it's a good thing, um, but I'm very... I'm a very organized person. I'm very P 
people-oriented. I have such an amazing relationship with my customers, and I want to keep it that way. And I find that, you know, morning, noon, and night, you know, this cell phone has <laughs> people reaching out constantly, um, mm -hmm. you know, with testimonials like, Jen, this just happened, or... Um, they're asking questions or they're like, hey, my, my friend, you know, needs to speak with you. She doesn't have doTERRA in her home. Um, can you do that? And it's just trying to fit all this in, you know. Uh, I love it and I will continue to do it. You know, I'm a full-time mom. I work full-time. I've got this on the side. Yeah. And I do, I do my best to fit everything in. Um, sometimes it can be a bit of a challenge and you need to kind of roll with the punches, make sure you schedule appropriate time, even for yourself. Like I, I had a situation earlier in the week where, you know, for a moment in time, I felt a little overwhelmed because I felt like I'm taking on so much, but I am that type of person that loves just take on everything. So it's just taking some time for you that you know that, you know, a few minutes or that one hour for yourself, yeah. it's okay. You're going to have your doTERRA stuff that I'm going to be doing at night when my daughter's asleep or in the morning, you know, while I'm having breakfast or on breaks while I'm at work, you know, you can fit it in. Anybody can do it. Totally. And it is a very interesting point you bring up about the accessibility people have sometimes with having a business on a phone, right? And it's tempting to just want to drop everything and answer people's questions. Yeah. But it is. It's a learning curve that we all kind of have to go through to put boundaries in place and um you know i can remember being taught that sometimes if you just take a little longer than normal to answer a lot of times people who are just quick to ask instead of looking for the answer themselves yes that eventually realize okay i could have looked that up faster <laughs> mm -hmm. than it took me to message so and so um but it is it's such a gift that this, this is something that can be built like on the go um, and I also remember that same feeling of being overwhelmed with the, the questions and people reaching out that that was one of my triggers that I was on the verge of explosive growth. And it, it was always that reminder to me to, OK, what what now do I need to start saying no to so that I can open up a little bit more time over here, a little bit more time to pay attention to if I continue to nurture this, what would be possible? So Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's a good yeah. check-in for anybody who's feeling that same way that you just mentioned, that that's telling you that there is something here that is ready to go. And it's, yeah, it's it's tough sometimes to to think about what, what, where would I make space and how would I do that and what's scary about that. But that belief, I think, that you have and that people who are listening might be like, I believe so deeply in what I'm doing is enough to... to and learn. that's the drive. Like, when you're so passionate... You know, other outsiders will look, they'll be like, Jennifer, you're taking on so many things. But when you're passionate about it, it doesn't feel like work, right? you know, at all. Um, and, you know, a lot of people will write down every day, you know, certain things you want to check off of your list to get done. That's an amazing thing to do. If I can offer that to anybody, make yeah. that checklist and don't put too many things on the list every day. There's yeah. always tomorrow. You can add a few things for, you know, the next day. Yeah. How do you kind of categorize what would be like if you know your time is limited or you're in a heavy period of your life with a lot of commitments? What what are the couple of things that are like non-negotiable for you for your business? Wow. I mean, it is the people aspect. It's that building connection with people. It is that accessibility, um, mm -hmm. about understanding they can wait a few extra minutes if absolutely necessary. Um, you know, it is fitting like for instance media like social media if I recognize okay so this week I wanted to do x number of videos you know all a lot a specific week like a specific day and block of time to do that and then in the morning I allot a specific amount of time for like social media posts that's when I'll you know schedule a few things or whatnot to have posted for the day yeah. um, so it's kind of Again, having like a little calendar to do of when to fit these different things in. But for me, it's the, the people being yeah. accessible to existing customers, connecting with new customers, you know, building relationships with them. And then the whole social media um, 
presence. I think yeah. it's important that people get those tips and, and benefits of the oils. And there might be somebody watching that, you know, currently doesn't have these amazing things and they don't even know they exist until they yeah. happen to see. Yeah. I love that advice. That's really, really good. I hope that that landed for somebody that is feeling a little scattered and not sure what to do. That's a great, great way of kind of chunking things out and, and reserving the time to tackle it. So let's kind of wrap up with this question. What would be your advice to somebody who's been sitting back, loving their oils, um, feeling like they're just missing that joy or that fulfilling peace in their life? What would be your advice right now to somebody feeling that way? So if they were thinking about the business, yeah, um, and they were already using doTERRA, yep. I would say, because I get this a lot, where people will reach out and they're thinking about the business. Yeah. And I think it's like a two-way street where that new individual needs, in my opinion, needs to find somebody that they connect with, they have a connection with. Um, I would want to know that somebody that's interested in doing this business is looking at me and they're like, you know, I can see her as somebody I would want to work with, somebody that can mentor me, somebody that has the patience to guide me, somebody I know that I can, you know, contact anytime I have questions, I don't need to hesitate, you know, Jennifer will be there. I would want that type of person to feel comfortable. And if they're, if they're not sure, I would want them to seek out somebody that they can see themselves partnering with. Because I think that's super important. When I look at the people on my team, you know, you, you need to have those individuals at work. It's a two way street. You know, I'll, I help you, you know, you're going to help me. We're one big team that's doing it together. You're not doing it alone. Yeah. Um, so I think that is huge. You, you need that. to have that connection with someone. Oh, that's really, really good. I've never heard somebody put it that way because usually we're thinking about who can we help? What problem do we need to solve for people? But that's, that's important. I think if somebody is like very intentionally thinking about doing something, you want to know that that support and that like full on I'm all in mentality is there um, because this is a business model that thrives on teamwork and thrives. Yeah. And I, I also think it's important. Like I wouldn't want somebody to go into this where they're not passionate enough about these items that have helped their, you know, family. Like if you're just doing something for the sake of, you know, um, you know, bringing extra money in. I feel like you have to have that passion. You have to want to help others. You want to have to you, to give back. And I think yeah. cause if you don't have that, how are people going to see that in you? Yeah. Um, so I think that would be the next. If somebody was seeking the business, I think that is an important. You need to do what you're passionate about. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Oh, you're so appreciative of your time and the way you show up and serve everybody is just Thank super, you. super inspiring. And uh, this was awesome to chat with you and, and have you share your buckets of knowledge. You're very welcome. We'll talk soon. Enjoy the rest okay. of your afternoon, Jennifer. You too. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye.